The 11th warden to die in the line of duty occurred on Monday, August 27, 1956, when warden pilot George E. Townsend crashed his new plane into Moranacook Lake shortly after taking off from its base in nearby Tallwood. He and his passenger, biologist Nathan W. Fellows, Jr., both died in the crash. The main warden service was issued two-way radios in 1956. Half the warden service was issued state-owned vehicles. Warden salaries increased to $72 a week and top pay was $90 a week. In 1960, a new law required boats with 10 horsepower and over motors to be registered and numbered and displayed on the hull. The Conservation Agency thrives on the goodwill of the public. To create and foster that goodwill is the duty of every representative of the Fish and Game Department. Without cooperation of farmers, landowners, and sportsmen, a warden would be strictly on his own. Prior to the night hunting season, gather your equipment and make preparations. Complete equipment includes regulation revolver with belt, holster, and ammunition, flashlight with a traffic type head, extra batteries kept in a handy place, such as a pocket, regulation red and black jacket, lunch and thermos of coffee, walkie-talkie, and extremely important, a notebook and pencil, and a sleeping bag. But when the poacher rocks the night with a shotgun blast, it's time for Maine's Warden Force to move in. If the driver maneuvers a car as if to evade you, give chase. Be careful to note if any equipment is thrown from the car. Lights, firearms, and especially ammunition are much easier to find immediately than later on. One duty of the game warden is to see that wildlife is protected. The poacher in general, and the night hunter in particular, are his initial targets during the critical deer jacking periods in problem areas. He is keeping to a minimum the number of deer killed at night and during closed season. The illuminating law came into effect in 1961 and reduced night hunting by 66%. That same year, the lie detector tests were demonstrated to Warden School candidates. The following year, seven new snowmobiles were purchased for law enforcement. The Warden Service Rescue Unit was formed with mountain climbers and scuba divers in 1964. That same year, a new department patch was made called the Spears Patch. Game wardens had a rocker put under the patch. The twelfth warden to die in the line of duty occurred on Monday, July 1st, 1968. Lyle Frost was killed in a dynamite explosion when he was attempting to blow up a beaver dam.
1968, new uniforms were issued, Stetsons and Ridgeway caps were included. One more division was added to make 11. District warden positions increased from 99 to 104, totaling 125 field positions. In 1972, warden service obtains Army surplus helicopters. The 13th warden to die in the line of duty occurred on Wednesday, September 27, 1972. Warden pilot Richard Varney crashed his helicopter into Moranacook Lake in Winthrop. He had just taken off from the lake base when the helicopter experienced a malfunction and crashed into the lake. He was able to exit the plane but drowned before rescuers could make it to his location. This is Charlie Allen calling from Pepper Hill, Florida, where we make our home today. I'd just like to say thanks again, and, uh, you know, let's all look forward to, you know, another 30 years of fine service from Game Warden. We thank you for the opportunity, and uh, I, I, feel, I feel very honored. Most of all, I guess i just so honored and thankful that I was a, a part of Warden service for... 23 years. I left the Warden Service in real good hands. Russ and I came along after I did, and uh, I'd like to congratulate the main Warden Service and and I more especially thank the guys that, that I worked with and retirees, and of course a lot of them aren't going to be around to hear that because uh, they've gone somewhere else, but I I really feel privileged to be part of this 130 years. The next Warden School candidates had to be able to swim in 1972. The following year, the Blaze Orange Law goes into effect statewide. 1974 saw personal flotation devices required for all watercraft. The following year, the first Maine Warden Service Color Guard team was established. In 1975, the department's name was changed to the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife to reflect its expanded mission to include non-game wildlife as well as traditional game species and expanded its regulatory authority. Three years later, practical training commences on Swan Island and is incorporated with Warden School. In 1978, Warden Deb Pullman is the first female game warden hired. In 1980, she began the Maine Warden Service K-9 team with Sergeant Bill Allen. The following year, the search and rescue overhead team was established and a command post was created. In 1986, the ATV laws began and added on to warden service responsibilities. The following year, a steel shot requirement for migratory waterfowl hunting began. This started in the southern half of the state only. The way wardens operate today is a lot different than, than we used to operate. And I'm not saying it's not as good or it was better then, but it, it is different. I retired in 1981, which was the 100th anniversary of Maine Warden Service, and I'd like to congratulate Warden Service on the 130th anniversary. My name is John Marsh. This is the Bog Hill Tree Farm in West Gardner, Maine, where many wardens have visited over the years. I'm looking at a cup that says 1880-1980, the 100th anniversary of Warden Service. And you're asking me to talk about the 130th. Well, my question is, where's the last 30 years gone? Warden Service certainly has a proud heritage. It is rec recognized across the nation. It is probably one of the very best conservation law enforcement agencies. Uh, Warden Service has done a very good job in changing with the time. But Warden Service has kind of changed as things have gone along. I think that they're doing a good job today and there's every indication that they'll continue to do so. The 
14th Maine Game Warden to die in the line of duty occurred on Saturday, November 21st, 1992. Warden William F. Hanrahan suffered a fatal heart attack as he was returning to his truck after running a track trying to locate some intoxicated hunters who fled. Warden Hanrahan had served with the agency for 15 years. Wardens and police officers from around the state gathered to say goodbye to one of their own today. Bill Hanrahan was laid to rest following his death Saturday. Hanrahan's death is a somber reminder that today's game warden carries with him an incredible amount of stress. Hanrahan died of a heart attack after he and his dog Major helped warden Phil Dugas chase a group of drunk hunters. There's danger. We, we don't particularly think about it, but uh, Obviously, the, the, uh, the stress, the, uh, the physical exertion, the, uh, the uh, anxiety that goes into to this type of thing comes into play. The Maine Warden Service says Hanrahan is the first warden to die in the line of duty in 20 years. the warden service transitioned from owning and maintaining its own patrol vehicles to leasing its vehicles through Central Fleet Management in Augusta. By September of 2000, all game warden trucks had extended cabs. In 1999, the main warden service transitioned from Smith & Wesson revolvers to new Sig Sauer P226 357 caliber semi-automatic handgun. Good afternoon, I'm Bill Vernon. I was in the warden service for quite a few years, I believe 36 altogether. And um, started out in Dakawam, ended up in Augusta as, a, as your colonel. And I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate you all on their 130th, 130 years of anniversary. Also, I'd like to congratulate the warden service and the warden administration for such great PR work we've seen in the papers and the, information gone out to the public in the last years and uh, I think it's just doing a great job. The time I was in Augusta, I'm sure it wasn't much different than it is right now. We're there from, I went down to 88 as a, the major to Larry Cummings. I stayed there till 91 with Larry and Larry passed away and I took over as colonel and stayed till 94 when I retired. The problems were the same then as they are now. We had, the money was up and down we had a lot of contract issues, and uh, we just lived through them. But uh, I never had a better day in my life than I did when I was a game warden. I just, I like being a district game warden. I like every part of the warden service. And uh, there's a lot of ups and downs, but most every day is good. And uh, I just like to tell you all, you've got a darn good job, and I believe you perform it very well. There isn't a game warden in this room that can't be proud. Uh, and hold their hand, hold their head high uh, to be a game warden because of the leadership and because of the men and women uh, that are game wardens today in 2010. Look around you, look at the people beside of you, and look at the people that you've worked for, and look at the people that you're working with now. There is no question that you're, you're working in conditions that are difficult uh, and you're doing an outstanding job. So to you, be safe, work hard, don't ever forget your oath. Best to you and for 130 years of Maine Warden Service, congratulations. <laughs>